Hey folks, Armin Hammer here, and today we're gonna to be talking about the five new drug policy violations that CrossFit just announced last night, including two CrossFit Games Masters athletes. Late last night, CrossFit updated the already quite long list of positive drug tests with five new names, three from regionals and two from the Masters divisions in the CrossFit Games. Now, I'm not sure exactly why the appeals process would have taken this long for the regionals athletes, but it included one athlete from the Meridian and two athletes from Latin America, and both of those athletes took third in their divisions on the individuals women's side and the individual men's side. The two Masters athletes involved that were tested at the CrossFit Games are Kelly Holm, who took fourth in the women's 35 to 39 division, and Sean Ramirez, who took second in the men's 40 to 44 division. There are a few interesting things about these Masters athletes testing positive. One is that they both tested positive for the same thing, Endurable, which is the exact same thing that Ricky Garrard tested positive in 2017. While Kelly Holm tested positive for Endurable, Sean Ramirez tested positive for Endurable and Osterin, which is a SARM well known for its performance enhancing capabilities. And it's something that a lot of the other athletes on this list have tested positive for, both the Endurable and the Osterin. The most interesting thing about these Masters athletes testing positive is that where Sean Ramirez got a four year sanction sanction, Kelly Holm only received a two-year sanction, and there's a small footnote there which says that during the appeals process, Kelly Holm was able to reduce her sanction from four years to two years. Now, according to her Instagram, she posted about this last night, saying that she was able to prove that she had a tainted supplement that included Endurable in it, and that is the reason why she tested positive. Apparently, being able to prove this was enough for CrossFit to reduce her sanctioning from four years to two years. Sean Ramirez also took to his Instagram last night to argue the same thing. He tested positive for minuscule amounts of these substances and he believes that they came from a tainted supplement. Now, where Kelly Holm was able to actually prove that that was the case to CrossFit's judgment and reduce her sanctioning, it doesn't seem that Sean Ramirez was that successful. So what's up with that excuse? The tainted supplements. It's like a boogeyman that so many athletes who test positive rely on to just say, hey, it was, it was a tainted supplement. I would obviously never do something like this. The fact of the matter is it can both be valid and invalid because the supplement industry is unregulated in a lot of ways and you never really know exactly what you're gonna be getting out of that product, whether it's in a bag or a tub or whatever. At the same time, because tainted supplements do actually exist, some athletes use that as an excuse knowing that it's gonna inject just the right amount of doubt into their case so that it doesn't seem like they're actually cheating the system. At the end of the day, we're looking at a high level competition with highly motivated people. And when you have that combination together, there are gonna be people who aren't afraid to break the rules or put themselves at risk in order to win. CrossFit's drug testing process isn't the best in the world, but it has caught a lot of people, especially this past year. And I think that's because the Ricky Garrard case woke them up to the fact that there are a lot of chances for very highly motivated people to cheat the system in specific ways. And one of the things they started doing earlier this year was they started testing athletes at regionals before the competition was actually concluded. So they started testing athletes earlier in the weekend, including when they were coming in to check in for the event. That said, CrossFit's testing seems to be getting better because they're catching more and more people, but it's not because more and more people are taking drugs, it's because the testing processes are improving in meaningful ways. But they're not catching everybody, and they never will. There are definitely people at the games and at regionals who are on drugs who have never tested positive because they're probably smart enough to cycle off in time for events that they know they're gonna be tested at. Now, I've reached out to both Kelly Holm and Sean Ramirez to see if I can get their side of the story for you guys and maybe give a little bit of a platform for them to explain themselves and give us a better idea of what this all means and why this could have happened. So we'll see what happens and I'll keep you guys updated. Remember folks, there's a whole lot going on in our sport and it's easy to miss some of the most interesting and important stories. That's what I'm here for and I'll see you guys next time.